All right, welcome back. It is a uh, Money Monday edition of Liquid Lunch on Biz TV. We're on Biz Talk Radio across the internet on Westwood One. We're on the Money Station up in Oregon. Just coming into this week, uh, take a quick look at the markets. Um, New York Stock Exchange, Dow Jones Industrial Average down 77. Uh, still some questions, I guess, out there, but not the major sell-off I've been looking for. Um We'll see how that continues. Bitcoin in the midst of a major sell-off as it hit 42000 last weekend. Um, but there's been a boatload of profit taken, I would imagine. Um, this thing trades in ranges of round numbers. Like I said, when it breaks through 30, it usually goes to 35, 40. Um, when it breaks through 40, coming down through 35, now we're at 31. 31,000, 30,000, if you look at the chart, should be the bottom. They call the top where it can't break through. They call that resistance. So we got up to 40 and that new high, 41, 42. It hit resistance and selling. It came down. Now, I believe from looking at the technicals and the charts, the way I read them, I believe 30 should be what they call support where there's a level here where people think there's a great, tremendous value, and they'll come in with some more buying. So as it accumulates between 30 and 40, I'd keep your eye on it, but I certainly think there's a buying opportunity there that'll add some value to your portfolio. Adding some value to your Monday, as he always does. I'm joined right now by my good friend, the host of Real Talk on Eyes on NJ, one of the best podcast shows out there. Uh, Fernando Uribe joins me right now. Good morning, brother. How are you? How are you, Johnny? Thanks for keeping up the good fight. Yeah, man. We're trying our best here. I mean, I'm trying to, you know, make hide or hair of all these crazy conspiracies, you know, the watermark ballots and all this, that, and the other thing. Um, I don't see it, Fernando. And as much as I would love to see some miraculous Hail Mary at the end and show that there was all this fraud and Donald Trump will be president for four more years, I'm sorry, but I don't see it. What are your thoughts? You know, John, I, I, I've come to that same realization as you. And again, good afternoon, everybody here on a Money Monday. And, you know, it, it's really demoralizing because we've always grown up since really since elementary school when we learned history and you know took civics courses that you know we believe that elections were always going to be fair and honest uh, and trustworthy. And for a lot of us around the country, whether it be here in New Jersey or across the river but with you in New York or anywhere else, uh, you know, we've become very skeptical of the process. Um, but again, apparently the results are what they are. Apparently, it seems that um, election law uh, varies state by state. And while people want to contest it or offer their conspiracy theories, I think that, you know, we have to sort of come to the just, again, the realization that uh, this election did not turn out the way it did, uh, that we wanted it to. Um, I think we have to sort of, you know, take our wins like when we get them and also take our losses and learn from this. I think it's I think it's vital, John, for the Republican Party now to sort of do a reboot and figure out exactly what direction they're going to head in uh, in four years. Uh, we're seeing that, uh, you know, Joe Biden now uh, will be inaugurated on the 20th of January, much to my dismay and also yours. But I think we also have to take, take this as a moment of, of pause and a moment to learn about what we can do better, not just as Republicans or conservatives, but I think as Americans and, and what we want out of the two party system. And I think that's going to be up for debate uh, in these next four years, John. No, uh, look, uh, Fernando, we, you and I have been talking about this for the last couple of years. We watched as Donald Trump's legitimacy as president was challenged from day one when they sent a bunch of undercover spies in to try to set him up for a crime right through the whole thing. The collusion delusion, the Ukraine impeachment, the investigations into his son, the release of his tax records. Any way Nancy Pelosi and the squad and the progressive left could challenge the legitimacy of this president, they've done it. And now I just couldn't believe that a company like Twitter would show their cards. A capitalist doesn't disqualify half of the potential audience, half of the potential paying folks. They don't do that. That doesn't help you in capitalism. So they just shut off 88 million people from using a freaking service because the president has done things that they don't like. So I think we're seeing in living color, buddy, who's really running this thing. Zuckerberg put $400 million into the swing states. Jack Dorsey suppressed the story about Hunter Biden. And now when it comes right down to it, we see where their cards are at. They ban the president and his family and all his friends because they don't want them to speak to the masses. 
John, you know, you brought up a term before about technocracy, and I think that's exactly what we're living in. So spot on uh, with you with that one, because uh, what we're seeing right now with these big tech corporations, and here's something for our audience to sort of ponder, where, I mean, they're publicly traded companies, okay? And, and they certainly have a right in the marketplace to uh, create a certain type of guidelines for their consumers, you know, their users. But I think, John, I think this is a moment of reflection for us as to, listen, if we want to make a difference and we want to have our voices heard, then it's up to us to not use these services, whether it be Facebook, whether it be Twitter, even Amazon, as we're seeing that even Amazon over the weekend was prohibiting Parler from being made available on web services. So I think it's up to us as consumers to make a really hard decision as to whether or not we're going to keep subscribing to these services, because that's how we make our voices heard. It's through our pockets. It's through hurting their pockets. And I don't know of many Americans, John, are ready to do that, are ready to stop using Apple products or stop using Amazon or ordering from Amazon Prime or to stop using Facebook and Twitter or Instagram. I, I think it's it, it's going to be a wait and see process, Sean, with many of us here in the country as to whether we want to make that really tough decision, because that's the only way we're going to hurt them is by not using their services. And if we don't use their services, their stocks plummet. And if their stocks plummet, then their value goes down. I, th I think it's all sort of a sequence, John. No, I'm with you, man. Um, I got friends of mine out there like, uh, you know, Fog City, Midge, and other influencers who are texting me, hey, they took down my page. They eliminated all my followers. It's just like the collateral effects and not even only the president. It's anyone that's talking about anything that is dissent towards their opinion. And it's scary. And now, um, you know, for the last few months, I've been working with some young men uh, building a decentralized app, and I'm gonna st I'm doing a whole bunch of work on the scalability of it because we weren't ready to launch just yet, but it is launched, and it's called Liberty Centric. It's a decentralized app that does a lot of the things Instagram does. Liberty Centric. Um, and it's not on Amazon Web Services. We're not in the Apple Store. We have been preparing for an Armageddon-like moment like this to say we could be free and unilateral of their uses because I thought this might happen. I never really believed it, but hey, um, preparation uh, is, is the key. Uh, do you think there's enough innovation in this country that we can come up with alternatives to the things we're addicted to? Uh, John, I would hope so. And, and I feel confident that innovators like the ones you're collaborating with uh, will continue to work at this because at the end of the day, listen, we all remember 16 years ago, as a matter of fact, 17 years ago, when, you know, a little known Harvard student uh, was creating the Facebook. And we all know the story behind it. We all know about his underhanded tactics uh, with his partners and how shady he was. And then we've seen also the rise of Facebook, the rise of YouTube, uh, the rise of Twitter and Instagram and even Snapchat. I have no doubt that innovation will continue, John, because that's the premise of technology. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, when we, you know, when the internet, actually 25 years ago, excuse me, when the internet broke on the scene, you know, we had no idea what it would sort of evolve into. And now we've seen high speed internet and browsers that we've never thought were possible. I think, it, listen, I think this is something that's going to be inevitable. And I think that people that are seeing how unhappy these current big tech companies are making Americans, it's going to motivate innovators more than ever now to come up with a new product, something that's competitive and something that's as compelling for users. Listen, I think Parler, it was a good start. I'm seeing other uh, websites sort of surface such as gab.com and, and other services that slowly but surely, John, if people can rally behind it, they'll weaken and neutralize at some point the big tech com companies, so, again, such as Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, because again, it's the free market. If people decide not to use these products, John, at some point, these companies have to, you know, have a come to Jesus moment and say, listen, what are we doing wrong? Why are we losing in the marketplace? Why are we losing customers? That's the only way we're going to teach these big tech companies not to mess with the consumers. But until then, uh, we're powerless, John. I mean, it's as simple as that. Um, it seems like right now we're probably at rock bottom of helplessness because we've allowed ourselves to become addicted to these social media platforms. And it yes. really, really stinks. And if you watch the movie, The Social Dilemma, they tell you straight up the people who invented these companies or were big parts of their invention, that the goal all along was to change your perception of what you want to hear 
uh, and it seems they've done that. Now we're going to have to, you know, it's like a junkie. Um, sometimes you got to hit rock bottom uh, before you can get some help, and we got to figure out a way to fight our way out of this. Fernando, Absolutely. thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. Stay safe out there, and you keep up the fight, too. We're probably going to get kicked off Facebook, the both of us, any day soon, but uh, we'll still be on Biz TV, and I'm working on a bunch of other alternatives that I can hopefully ex disclose very soon. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Give me a post it, John. Best of luck. Sure will. Fernando Uribe, faculty member at Bergen Community College, host of Eyes on NJ. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with more of your Money Monday today. Um, talk about the markets. Talk about InvestView and Bitcoin mining a little more. And uh, Newsmax host of the uh, Saturday Agenda, Joe Pinion, joins us a little later in the hour. We'll be back right after this.